following up with this hypothetical subject, when you do bring the camera out, let's say you've met with them three mm -hmm. times and you've built a rapport and there's a level of trust there, but you notice that they've changed a little in front of the camera. Maybe they're super on, mm -hmm. maybe they're mm -hmm. second guessing themselves. How do you get them, and this is a horrible terminology, but I can think of no other, verbal diarrhea, just get it out of them. And I know that's really just... <laughs> how do we... How, how do you do, get it out of them? Yeah. Just, how do you get that actingness out of them, sort of that performance? Or nervousness or whatever it is because you're trying to get to that sort of yeah, core question. of who they are and everybody has their mm. own way of acting once that camera first comes out. And again, that's yeah. a horrible term. I would say, I would say that, um, I mean, that is a bit of a challenge when you've, you know, you've traveled halfway around the world, let's say, to, to spend time with somebody. And they're not being themselves on camera. They're, they're acting or performing. That is, that is, that's, that happens um, as hard as you try for it not to happen. Um, Are there any tricks you do? You know, one, one thing that helps, <laughs> I think, that I find helps quite a bit is um, I really feel like, I really feel like, um, you know, asking, asking the same question to them repeatedly. So you ask him a question, you know, why do you do what you do? And you get, you get an answer. And then an hour later, why do you do what you do? Why do you do what you do? And you keep asking them. Eventually, they're gonna, you're gonna wear them down and they're gonna stop putting on a show. Cause it's hard to put on a show in front of the camera. I mean, it really gets sort of tiring. Um, We've had, we've had shoots where we, did, we had the camera, I've had the camera in my hand where I wasn't even rolling because I knew we're not really getting anything. So I just stopped rolling because there's no reason to bring all this footage back that we're not going to use. And then once I feel like they've kind of let their guard down and they're being themselves more, um, then we start rolling. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, I, when I was younger, I spent some time in front of the camera and I did some acting and... Um, really enjoyed it when I was a little kid. And so I definitely have spent time in front of the camera and I understand the fact that it's, un it's an unnatural place to be and people can get a little nervous in front of the camera. So we just do the best we can to take, take the mystery out of it and to, try to, and to try to allow people to just act themselves. And you know, it's funny, Something happened on our on our most recent film on If You Build It. Uh, got, it it never had happened before, but it was just I'd never heard this before. But it was something I'll never forget. Um, one of the subjects in our film is a guy named Matt Miller, and he's an architect and a teacher in in our film. And his mom lives very far away from him. I think she's like two thousand miles away from where he lives, and they don't see each other that often. But she told me that uh, we gave her a copy of the film and she told me that a lot of times she'll watch the movie just just to be around him and she feels like our movie is Matt. I mean that that's how she described it that our movie really just captured who he is and that when when the movie is on sometimes she'll turn the volume down but she feels like she's around him. I mean that, that to us is what we're trying to achieve. We want to tell great stories but we don't want to change our subjects to do that. I, I think there's great stories in real life, and if if you if you're patient enough, you know you can you can really capture those stories without changing them.